This video is all about fashion and styling lessons I've learned from observing Princess Kate for over 11 years. I'm warning you, it's going to be a long video and I didn't want to separate it. Now feel free to pause and rewatch these tips. They are very good. So grab a nice cup of hot coffee and enjoy. Now, if you've seen my video on how to find your personal fashion style, well, then you probably saw this one coming. In fact, it's your comments that have inspired me to compile today's list. So we can all agree that if you've heard about her, then you also know that, well, everything that she wears sells out within hours. She's known for wearing accessible clothes. She has an impeccable style, which translates elegance and just timelessness across cultures around the world. Nude heels, we all wear them by now, but it wasn't until I read an article about the nude tone heels that I put two and two together. You see, the nude and skin color shades didn't exist till 2013 when Christian Louboutin invented the nude in five shades. So if you're like me, I considered nude as a light shade of brown, like a beige, and I automatically categorized it as earth color within the brown family. I couldn't imagine wearing it as a neutral standalone color and match it with every other color on the spectrum, such as with red, blue, purple, you name it. When I saw the nude pattern heels on Kate, it was also a coincidence that it was the same shade as her legs, I thought. I didn't know it's supposed to match her legs. And that was the aha moment when in my mind, I removed this neutral shade from the brown box and put it in its own category. The nude is the best shade that matches your skin tone with the purpose of providing the lift and elongating your legs as an extension of your legs. It was a game changer. Pantyhose always make your legs look better. I grew up with hosiery and every adult woman that I saw in Romania was wearing them. I started wearing them when I was a teen and very quickly saw the practicality of it, which is to protect your feet from rubbing against the shoes. You never wear shoes against the skin unless it's summer with open toe shoes and even then I would argue sometimes you need it for the comfort now if we analyze the aesthetic aspect of how good the legs look I mean the hosiery is her secret as well for looking put together polished and as I always say it really is makeup for the legs now another interesting fact that I read is that Wearing hosiery is required and part of the etiquette in some circles. I remember reading that one must always wear them in, you know, the queen's presence back when she was with us. Comment down below and let me know what are your thoughts on this topic. I want to say that it's also a cultural habit. I mean, in the US, it's rare and people find it constraining. Yet, you know, ironically, the Spanx shapewear brand came to life with this concept in mind. The founder, Sarah Blakely, said the night the idea came to her was when she tried on pantyhose and cut the legs off just to give her the tightness around the waist. Now, I would have kept the entire thing on, but fast forward 22 years, now there's an entire industry dedicated to shapewear, but pantyhose are still struggling somehow to be popular. There is a dress for every occasion. Of course, I watch her outfits, especially when she's traveling and on tours, but my favorite outfits are when she is photographed in casual day-to-day -day activities just like us, because we get to see the human side as well, you know, more relaxed setting where she can dress herself for herself. And in these settings, I noticed that she's still wearing dresses, casual cotton dresses, shirt dresses, relaxed, flattering fits. And even while on tour participating in sporting events, she still manages to wear dresses midi or maxi length, or when taking her kids for a walk on a stroller. So ladies, there are no excuses for us. If she can do it with millions of eyes on her, then so can we. And this is such a great example that I've taken into consideration when dressing casually. It has redefined my own notion of casual. And it's this category that I think we can all focus on more. Simple lines, monochromatic dresses, the shirt dress is the easiest casual version, or A-line, white, light colors, no fuss, easy day-to-day -day wear with flats or wedges.
grudges. So next time you dress up Saturday morning or when you go for a walk, run errands, I hope you can reconsider pants and go for a skirt or a dress. Now, don't worry, I'm tempted as well. And other than being cold, I will choose a skirt for a casual look. Here, I can recommend to you a simple pleated skirt that you can just throw on with a simple top and boat shoes. Make sure it's in a color that you can easily style with the rest of your wardrobe. There are heels for every occasion. Same as with the dresses, I notice she almost always wears heels, especially for activities the rest of us don't. So depending on the softness of the ground, when she has sporting events on grass, for example, or walks in the garden, even when walking on the beach, she wears wedges. Tall, four-inch wedges sometimes. She played volleyball in four-inch heels. Kudos to her. I would be too scared to, you know, tumble, especially in front of the cameras. I mean, this is such a nice example that you don't need to wear only flip-flops on the beach or that you need, you know, running shoes simply because you're walking on grass. For this reason, I recommend investing in a pair of low wedges, one to two inch tall. And if this is too short for you, just consider them as flats with a lift. <laughs> they will shape you in a more flattering way, not only for a little bit of extra height, but also the visual feminine touch of the sandals. It's pleasing to the eye and looks favorable on all of us. So if you're wondering what to wear on top, well, you guessed it, a nice flowy dress. You can't go wrong with this look. Coats are investment pieces. My love of coats started with her as well. And you know, as I'm thinking about these points in a video, I realize how much of an influence she has on me or had. You see, the seed was planted in my mind when I was a child and seeing my mom wear beautiful long coats. When I see Kate wear them, it's probably custom and you know, just a way of life in the UK. In the US, it's not as popular other than, you know, seeing on the politicians. We settle for the shell jacket here, which are warm and pricey sometimes, we can all agree that coats are the most elegant version of outerwear. So if you see the diversity of shapes, styles, and colors that she wears, yes, it looks polished and timeless, elegant, but also wearable. It's not something fancy you save in your closet for the holidays. I encourage you to invest in these simple, classic versions that you will reach out for. Buy colors that are neutral but wearable, navy, brown, beige. And over time, expand to colors that match more of the outfits underneath the coat. But start with one. Wear fitted clothes. I know she probably has her own army of seamstresses. <laughs> and tailors in the US, you know, depending where you live or expensive but paying attention to how well clothes fit on her it's an important detail which is overlooked by many I don't think we need to rely on tailors to look good and alter every single thing we wear but we do need to get the same result the first time we shop for a piece of clothing so let me give you an example. It has to fit really well when you buy it. If it doesn't, then keep looking for the right fit. Don't settle for a mediocre fit just because you like the style or the embellishment or the color. I know, I am tempted as well. So saying no is a muscle we need to keep practicing with. At least now you know what to look for, a great fit for you. Not slouchy, not loose, not baggy, and never ever oversized. Blazers are a must have in any outfit. Kate has such a beautiful, wonderful collection of blazers. I noticed them when she wore this fitted navy blazer with a bateau crew neck with stripes and skinny jeans. It stood out to me because we don't often see blazers being worn with jeans, definitely not for a sporting activity, which led me to believe that hers was stretchy. So that outfit looks so good, not many of us can look elegant in jeans, right? So it was that that moment I realized how important a blazer is to an outfit and while now it's a common look on social media you know the difference between the majority and her look is the fit of the blazer not baggy or oversized you can wear jeans and sneakers and look put together not sporty but casual just by tossing on a fitted blazer it's genius 
And speaking of upgrading your basic attire, the most casual outfit, even jeans, can become polished. And all it needs is that one elegant piece, the collar, the earrings, or the blazer. I am just fascinated by how simply she can take an activity such as a walk in a park or a run on track, sailing a boat, or even roasting marshmallows with scouts and still make it look not only good, but elegant. Elegant doesn't mean a ball gown, it means attention to details, quality, and a few tricks with the right accessories. Layers with you know white button shirt, never missing out on earrings, and the white color. You know, the Peter Pan color is one a popular one that I noticed she likes to wear. It's delicate, it's feminine, and a subtle homage to royalty being passed on. By the way, any one of us can wear the color. No one is stopping us from wearing delicate lace popping out from under a sweater, even with jeans. Drop earrings upgrade any outfit and can be worn even with jeans. She favors drop earrings, which always make a statement. Right, she wears them at sporting events and even though at first I wasn't used to seeing fancy earrings worn this way before, if you're like me, just the statement jewelry was saved for special occasions. But why not wear them all the time? That's what she does. You know, of course, her special occasion jewelry looks very different <laughs> from ours. But on this note, I recommend saving a unique pair of earrings and jewelry set necklace, perhaps, for the times you indeed need to dress up. And the rest, just wear in rotation without a reason, just put them on. It will help make you feel dressy, even on a regular, non-remarkable day. Continuing with jewelry, I can't help but notice when reading about it how she always picks meaningful pieces. She wears brooches and gifted jewelry from other royals, her husband I assume, and also dainty necklaces with initials of her children. There is thought and care behind these accessories and little reminders of, well, carrying your heart out on your sleeve which to me gives more value to what I wear. Surround yourself with pieces that bring you not only joy, but love and memories of people you care about in your life. I want to point out that you can extend this gesture of wearing pieces that were gifted to you, even to clothes and other cherished presents, even more so when in the company of the people that give you the gifts. It's an understated sign of respect and recognition that you are giving attention to this person indirectly. When I meet my mom, I always try to wear jewelry that she gifted me and she always takes note of it. And you know, when I make this gesture, it's not a coincidence. It's to purposefully bring joy to others. Travel can be done in a dress. I think within the last year, I saw pictures taken at the airport of her and William with the kids unloading from the car, about to head inside the airport, and she was wearing a beautiful, simple blue maxi dress. It was a casual dress fitted but relaxed with white flats. Just another regular day traveling on a commercial plane with her family, as we do. So this image said so much to me because she's still maintaining her feminine aura while being casual and comfortable. We all want this, right? And what a great example, again, of not wearing pants. I find pants constraining as well, especially during long flights. So if you're worried about being cold or showing legs, just wear a longer dress and try it out next time you travel. Perhaps not in winter though. <laughs> Casual doesn't mean it has to be pants. You know, I think I pointed this out throughout the video. Next time you want to wear pants in your non-work schedule, just think, what would Kate wear? <laughs> That's what I do. And the answer is usually a nice cotton dress away. So I have these sweater dresses that I wear around the house in winter and they are not fancy. They are not tight, they are warm. I wear them with leggings, the thick lined ones. And to me, it's about making a stand against against pants as much as I can. I also have some wrap dresses that are on the thinner side for the warmer weather. And you know, it's very quick, it's easy, it's comfortable and not pants. Uh, being able to throw on something quickly is very much needed most days. And also, you know, my number one reason for wearing dresses is that, you know, you guessed it, comfort. <laughs> 
Wearing high and low cost pieces. This point I read about over and over again in the media. You know, she can afford to buy anything she wants in the world. And the fact that she also chooses pieces that are on the low end of cost, even from Zara and H&M, just goes to show that when you like something, the price doesn't matter. And beautiful things don't need to cost a fortune. So to conclude this point, mix and match all your pieces. Stop thinking about the cost of what you wear and style it because you feel like wearing it, it matches best with everything else you want to wear. Be mindful of your audience. Always dress keeping in mind the location where you're traveling and the people you're going to meet to bring homage to them. So this point is a bit similar to the one about the jewelry. Now, if you receive a present, wear it next time you see that person. Practice active listening and try to remember what people like or don't like and incorporate these elements in the near future. Now, after carefully analyzing Kate's choices in dressing abroad, yes, you know, she has a stylist and, you know, a whole team helping researching the location where she will visit. But there's another element here of being deliberate in our choice. You see, when you and I dress for a new event, what do we do? We probably wear something we are already have in our you know closet or shop for a new look but mostly based uh, on you know the activity itself not for the people hosting us so when Kate orders outfits every decision from color to material and style matters so think about how can you incorporate so much meaning into your next outfit or gesture now let's switch gears and talk about how she dresses her children. The classic preppy look is timeless even for them. Your children's outfits is an extension of you. And if you think, well, you know, kids are kids and they just want to dress to get dirty and have fun, you are correct. <laughs> but in case you notice, some kids wear beautiful dresses from time to time, you know, and they get complimented on the cute bows and you want perhaps to upgrade the sporty kids look a bit. So here's what Kate does. Mary Jane shoes, she dresses her sons and her daughter in these. White crew length socks, she dresses them mostly in white and navy combination shades. The Peter Pan color and sweaters with embroidery. Hand-me-downs and recycling the look is normal and valuable, especially in the sustainable direction we're heading towards. So if you have both genders in the house, I recommend, well, getting neutrals because it can be worn by everyone. I personally look for these because I am pinked out uh, since the kids were two years old. So blue and red are a nice welcome anytime for me. Makeup is there to enhance your look. So her eyes makeup is emphasized because of the photos, but you know, off camera, she wears minimal makeup. We've seen footage taken of her walking off duty. So the lipstick is always natural looking. You know, I know you see me right now with substantial makeup, but the camera washes you out. And when in front of it, you definitely need more. If I, may, if I wear right now my natural makeup look, you would think I don't have any <laughs> until you see me in person. But she always keeps it toned down. It's never her makeup that you notice first, but her beautiful smile and well, the gorgeous hair. But my point here is that makeup should never be distracting. It's like wearing a costume mask. Yes, it's beautiful, but do you want people to look at your mask or at you? Which brings me to my next point of why I think so highly of her. She is a remarkable example of common sense and decency at a time when in most public figures it's fading away. So aging is natural wrinkles are natural, shrinking lips are natural. You will never see her do any surgical cosmetic alteration. In fact, the most I've ever seen her do is color her gray hair, which I'm sure it will stop at some point if we consider the queen's gradual transition as an example. Well, just look at her leaving the hospital after having each of her children. Yes, she had her hair blow dried, but just take a minute and understand how she shared her normal mom body, cradled her postpartum belly vulnerable in front of millions of eyes watching and all because it's natural. Being fit and healthy is a big part of the personal style and look. She's an active sportswoman and we know this from all the activities that she's participating in and the courage she has to perform in them. 
Her response when someone asked her how she maintains her physique was by chasing her kids around. And I can totally relate to that. I can't help but think that health is the number one reason why one is, you know, exercising. And a good looking body is secondary as an effect. However, she did have moments after giving birth when she had a belly like the rest of us and she strategically dressed herself to look flattering. So when looking for coverage, the fit of the wear is key to distract from the problematic area. So if you have a belly to conceal, wear a tulip style shirt to shield the front and an open blazer that will instantly cut off unwanted eyes from the sides. Show an interest in the people you talk to. Genuine interest. So once you're inside the event, don't worry about your look or dress or heels or anything like that that fidgets. If you want to do a quick checkup, of course, you have the restroom for that, but things will go wrong. Just be in the moment. You know, it's more meaningful to the people you're with. So here I remember early on in her marriage, she visited a camping ground and was playing with clay with a group of children, scouts, and she didn't mind to get that ring dirty. And the witness's reaction was mixed because we know how precious and important the ring is, but I would argue even more so to her. And you know, it can be cleaned, but those are kids' memories interacting with her that will last a lifetime. So I think that was a very real moment of her. And these reactions are such a good example to not make it about ourselves when we're in a similar situation and just be genuine with the people present. And my last point that I've learned from her is to be genuine and kind. The smile is the best accessory to any outfit. So we know this even from the best communicators that smiling even over the phone when no one can see you sets the tone for success. In addition to the fact that a smile is contagious and incredibly attractive and disarming. So always start and end the conversation with a smile.